Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is the web series where we follow all the latest updates and rumours regarding the Superman reboot. This is episode 18, and firstly, I want to say, if you are a DC fan excited for the DCU and want to talk to myself and other DC fans, I have created a Discord server dedicated to exactly that. It's really great fun, and as the DC news increases, there will be a lot of exciting conversations to have. So if if you're interested, there is a link in the description below. But now on with today's episode. Has James Gunn been lying? That is the question that has been circulating social media over the past few days. There seems to be a specific section of fans who think Gunn lies about everything, and this is something we actually addressed in the previous episode of The Road to Superman. And this is regarding Nathan Fillion's comments about when Gunn told him he was going to play Guy Gardner. And he said, we were actually at the premiere party after Suicide Squad, and he was in a huge crowd of people. We saw each other in the crowd, and I congratulated him. Oh my god, that was amazing. It's so great. He goes, hey, did Peter Safran tell you what we've got for you next? I said, no, he hasn't said. He looked around like someone was going to be listening. We were in a throng of people, but he leaned in over and said, you're going to be Guy Gardner. Now, this is incredibly confusing as the Suicide Squad came out in 2021, and at the time, Gunn wasn't the head of DC, and in fact he had made it clear he wasn't interested in being head of DC or making a Superman film in the first place, and Discovery hadn't even merged with Warner Brothers yet, so the timeline doesn't make sense. Some are saying maybe Gunn was planning on having Guy Gardner in Peacemaker, but I believe that Nathan Fillion has got his parties mixed up. I think he actually meant a Guardians of the Galaxy 3 three party which Nathan also appeared in. And that would make a whole load more sense. Guardians 3 came out in mid-2023, when Gunn and Safran were co-heads of DC, so it would make sense for Gunn to tell Nathan that information in mid-2023, and for him to ask Nathan if Safran had told him their plan. And the news officially broke a few months later that Nathan Fillion would be Guy Gardner in Superman Legacy. So that timeline makes a lot more sense. And it turns out my assumption in the previous episode was true. James Gunn confirmed that he meant the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 premiere party. But of course, with some people out there, that isn't enough. One user replied with, nice cover, we know we were lied to, which caused one other user to say, about what? And Gunn had the same question. And fortunately for us, another user elaborated saying, I'm going to infer that the we were lied to angle is regarding a popular conspiracy theory that you were always planning on rebooting DC and making your your own Superman movie when you first got hired by Warner Brothers and finished the Suicide Squad, hence intending on always screwing over Cavill and lying to the fans since you said you had at the time no interest in running DC and didn't want to make a Superman movie. And Gunn responded with, I don't quite understand how that fits, aside from the fact I had no interest in running DC until Peter decided to do it with me so he could do the executive stuff and I could focus on creative, when I was hired to write Superman, it was always intended as and pitched as a new Superman story. So why would I lie about not planning that at the squad premiere, which would have amounted to the same thing at the end of the day? How does this particular conspiracy theory make sense? And he's made a perfect point there. It doesn't make sense. These conspiracy theories are so frustrating because it's blatantly obvious that people are bending over backwards to make it seem like Gunn has lied to them, or even that he had a dark plan all along. It's honestly getting exhausting. Even if he did lie, and it was actually at the Suicide Squad premiere, it would have amounted to the same thing at the end of the day. Nothing would have changed because the same outcome has happened. It's like these people people want to have a gotcha moment where they catch him out and expose him. Even if he had planned to reboot the DC Universe when he made the Suicide Squad, who cares? It doesn't change anything because he wasn't even in power until late 2022. And not only that, but he literally tried to make the DCEU still feel connected with wanting the Justice League to appear at the end of Peacemaker. Whether you like that scene or not, and I hate it, I do admire and acknowledge his desire 
to make things still feel connected. If he had this big dark selfish plan of rebooting the DC universe since making the Suicide Squad, then why did he make sure to include the DCEU's Justice League in Peacemaker? He could have had a whole new Justice League appear or not even have them turn up, but he made sure to use as many of the Justice League cast as he could and that's because at the time he had no interest in taking over DC and wanted the DCEU to be connected. Their logic just doesn't make sense and people saying he has lied about wanting to be head of DC because he once said he wasn't interested in Hamada's job and now suddenly he has accepted the job is once again another moment where fans are ignoring basic logic and forcing conspiracy theories because they're upset with him rebooting the DCEU. He explained why he had no interest at first but then changed his mind. He has just said aside from the fact I had no interest in running DC until Peter decided to do it with me so he could do the executive stuff and I could focus on creative. And that makes sense. He is a director, he is a creative. Hamada's job was looking at the executive side and the creative side, although Hamada lacked creativity altogether. But the point is, if Gunn was the head of DC, he would have had to do the business side too, which he is not an expert in and he is not qualified to do so, which is why he initially rejected it. However, when the idea was pitched that he would be running the creative side only and his close friend and longtime partner Peter Safran would be running the business side only, it made sense for him. It meant he could just focus on being creative and he had someone he really trusted and works well with to worry about the business side of things. I know I keep on saying this, but that makes total sense. Yet somehow, people are still trying to bend over backwards and say he is lying. They say they don't trust him, but I think their evidence for that is weak. And these conspiracy theories they are creating, rather than seeing the most logical answer, is why no one really takes them seriously. Anyway, let's move away from the conspiracy theories that Gunn has now fortunately debunked. Gunn has also been talking about the production time of Superman. One user asked, Latest news floating on the internet states that filming will be wrapped by middle of July, leading to speculation of an overdose of CGI effects. Any info if you can provide us on the amount of practical effects versus CGI that we can expect in Superman. And Gunn responded with, how would a July wrap relate to CGI? And that's a valid question and someone clarified by saying, I think he's trying to say since it's a five to six month shoot, is there an overuse of CGI in the film because he thinks that's too quick for a movie to film? And Gunn replied with, really? It's the longest schedule I've ever had for a film. And I have to say, I'm really surprised by that from Gunn because I think five months is actually quite short for a superhero movie's production. I could have sworn that normal productions for superhero films last about six to eight months sometimes. I could be completely wrong there and maybe it's to do with the persistent reshoots DC has been doing lately, but a production only lasting five months when it's for a big movie such as Superman is a real surprise to me. But is this a worry and should we expect there to be an overuse of CGI? Well, I don't think so. Gunn has been really focused on building large sets and using real locations as much as possible, so CGI will only be used when it's really needed. Remember, building the sets mainly happens in pre-production, so all they need to do in production is just filming there. So that could take a day or two per set, depending on the scale of the scene. So I guess five months does kind of make sense. I think this also shows the efficiency they are working at. Gunn is already editing the movie and is constantly sending over shots to the VFX department so they can get to work on those shots to make the CGI as strong as possible, which basically means production and post-production are almost blended together, which will mean that the deadline of next July will almost certainly be met. Production is obviously not over yet and won't be over until July this year, and within that time I do expect us to get some more images of the set and hopefully, I'm praying, a professional video of the suit reveal. But as this movie is working so efficiently, we could be hearing a trailer being worked on quite early into post-production. And I don't mean them releasing the trailer early on, what I mean is I think they will have more to work with early on in the process due to gun editing and getting the VFX department working on shots already. So instead of them having to wait three or four months into post-production before putting a trailer together, they could be working on it from as early as one to two months into it. Sci-fi movies normally have their first trailers released around five months 
or so before the movie releases worldwide, which means we won't get a trailer for Superman until next year, so not for another 9 months or so. Which feels like an eternity away, but if you think about it, 9 or so months ago Barbie and Oppenheimer came out, which feels like yesterday, so that time will fly by. So let me know your thoughts on Gunn's comments and let me know your excitement levels for our new Superman movie in the comments below. But that is all for today's video, thank you so much for watching, please make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon, so until then, have a great day. Bye!